I see France as the own, perhaps the only nation in the EU and NATO that has a kind of a quasi-independent foreign policy. They have their own nuclear submarines with their own warheads on them. Unlike the UK, whose nuclear warheads are mated to American missiles, which makes the red button in Washington. How do you see France's foreign policy? Is it an independent actor unlike the other EU nations? Not really. See, France has a problem. Uh, now with the United States building up this new Europe against old Europe, they have to preserve their position, which is becoming more and more difficult because Germany has succumbed. They just succumb to American pressure. Can you imagine the North Stream 2 is sabotaged, North Stream 1 is sabotaged. German investment in it, German economic interests are deeply involved and Germany says nothing. Don't even say that, let's investigate, let's see who's done in nothing. And uh, then under pressure from the United States, they try to resist it. They said, you send your leopard tanks. They said, no, we send them if you send your Abrams tanks. It resisted a little bit, but then they succumbed again and they sent the tanks. Yes. Uh, and they are being lectured. Uh, look at the state of Germany today. They, they receive lectures from Zelensky. <laughs> Zelensky try, humiliates them. Yes. And Poland has asked for $1.2 trillion of damages from the Second World War. Yes. This is the state of Germany. Why I'm saying this is that the Franco-German tandem which was the heart of uh, the European Union, that has got weakened. Right. That has weakened France. Because hmm. France can't go it alone. If you remember when uh, Macron went to China uh, some time ago, yes. he took the German Chancellor with him. Hmm. Huh? Because that was a show of strength to China, that Europe is united. Right. This time he, could, he, he didn't take Scholz with him, he took hmm. the EU, la EU lady Van der Leyen yes. uh, with him. Again, to show that EU is united, but it's not the same message. That is one part. The other is that uh, France has to retain its leadership. If it doesn't join the gang, it will be marginalized. Because America is controlling uh, everything. And Britain is playing a very insidious role from the outside because they, they always wanted the European Union to be weak. Uh, and that's why they wanted the expansion of the European Union to dilute the centrality of France and Germany. And now they're very happy to you know, build up Poland, Poland supply arms to Ukraine, determine the security future of uh, Europe from outside. They don't not leave it entirely to uh, the Europeans themselves to uh, decide. Now, if uh, France uh, doesn't fall in line uh, it'll be marginalized. And the public opinion has been so brainwashed, so brainwashed through the press mm. and think tanks and others, that they will not accept any dissent. Mm. So, moment uh, Macron in the past, when he said that at the end of the day, when we have a new security architecture, we, sh we have to take Russia's concerns, security concerns in mind, he will, he will blast it right. uh, by Ukraine, of course, mm. uh, but uh, Europeans and his own press. Uh, so, Macron plays hot and cold. At one time, he talks about negotiations, that you have to explore that, and he did, uh, he did talk to Putin. He visited Putin also, uh, so to keep the door open. Uh, and on the other hand, as in his uh, speech when Zelensky came to France a few days ago, if you read the, the text, full support to Zelensky, including on the criminal court, set up an ad hoc tribunal, We'll give you all that you uh, need uh, to defend uh, yourself and stuff like that. Uh, that is the second. Third is that uh, <clears throat> because of this situation uh, France is in, where it really no longer can uh, determine European policy, uh, the Russians uh, don't take France uh, seriously enough. They say, well, no point in talking to you. We have to talk to the Americans. It's the Americans who are doing all this. The Americans have to decide. So our interlocutor has to be America, not you. Uh, so, in other words, they don't uh, accept uh, France's capacity uh, to move the United States or, or <coughs> Europe <coughs> in general uh, towards uh, some kind of dialogue and diplomacy uh, with uh, Russia. Uh, so, insofar as the French nuclear deterrent is, is concerned, now the Russians have put in a spoke in the wheel. Earlier on, all the disarmament negotiations were between Russia and United States. Well, start one, start two, everything. 
Now the Americans are saying, the Russians are saying, after the Ukraine conflict and the kind of threats that we are faced with, we don't make a distinction between the American nuclear arsenal and uh, the nuclear arsenal of Europe, especially as U.S. nuclear arms are stationed in Europe. Yes. Therefore, in future disarmament negotiations, it has to be with the transatlantic alliance, which France will never accept. So I think uh, having a nuclear deterrent of their own gives them a certain sense of prestige and mm -hmm. protection. <clears throat> but uh, they are not threatened. They are not threatened. Threatened either way, uh, from by America or within Europe. Yes. Only potential threat is against uh, by Russia. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they have the horsepower <clears throat> to stand up to Russia right. uh, in the nuclear uh, domain.